because we have here two um, amazing speakers, uh, Sayed Musa, the Iko Musa, that's, yeah, sorry, Shah, uh, yes, and uh, Basel. Um, so uh, let's start with the questions. You're known as an expert in Facebook ad. So could you please let us, you know, just understand how to launch their successful uh, Facebook ads campaigns for e-commerce brands? Okay, sure. So can everyone hear me? Yeah, I think that was good. Um, yeah, first of all, my name is Musa. I'm 34 years old and I'm doing e-commerce since 2015 now, uh, mainly through performance marketing, which is mainly Facebook ads. And uh, to answer your question, there are obviously different ways and strategies to do so, but generally what used to work is that you target specific audiences within Facebook. Um, if you have run Facebook ads in the past, you can see there are different objectives that you can select within your campaign. And uh, what used to work very well is always to go for purchase and choose the objective sales in general. Um, nowadays, in 2023 especially, Facebook likes to see different objectives combined. So for example, you are running ads for purchase and you want to make sales, but also you want to um, choose the objective engagement. So you want to get actually the viral factor on your ad and this will enhance your performance overall um, within Facebook campaign. So if you break it down to um, specific, let's say audiences, right? So you can target different countries. So I'm a German, I'm focusing on a German market mainly. Um, and in, what used to work very well in Germany is that you are um, selecting different target audiences. For example, you have a beauty product and you want to sell it. You can select three keywords within the beauty niche. But also what you want to select is a broad targeting. So you would actually target the whole area, um, let's say uh, complete Germany, and just select one gender, and the beauty niche it would be um, females, and you let Facebook do its job. Because Facebook is nowadays very smart in terms of selecting the right um, potential customer, and you just wait and sit and um, obviously analyze the numbers and go from there. Um, so basically a combination of both, like niche targeting and broad targeting is nowadays very good. Obviously also combined with uh, good content, which is nowadays um, video content, um, let's say UGC ads, so user generated content is very um, attractive right now because people want to see actually um, the usage of a product and um, yeah, that's basically the, the best combination nowadays. Great, but um, then you talk about content. What else could be the key thing to succeed uh, when you launch in your Facebook ad? So in, if you are running video-based content, you want to make sure that the first three seconds are actually getting the attention of the potential customer because nowadays the people don't have a big attention spam. That's why TikTok is so successful because people just scrolling, they want to be entertained and the same thing has to happen with your ad if you want to deliver a message or a problem solving situation. Uh, so yeah, make sure that the first three seconds are very clear about what this ad is about, what the product is about what the solution is about and also you want to have a wow effect because the people want to be entertained they want to see something spectacular in the sense uh, because you can sell any product if you want to but it has to be um, obviously at the right uh, pace because it can cost extremely high to get a certain um, purchase uh, but if you make sure that the people are actually viewing your content and clicking your content then you are also going to make uh, profitable sales as well that's great. Um, and uh, actually, another thing is um, then, like, what should be done on user side, basically on the website, to get the accurate data, good numbers, good conversions, etc. <laughs> In terms of conversion rates, um, I mean, we have basically two big conversion windows that you always want to look in, into because uh, first conversion window is people are clicking on your ad and going into your store. And the second thing is basically 
making the purchase happen. So people are on your store and they should exit the um, purchase, uh, the checkout page. Um, so if you are seeing within your Facebook ads, for example, people are going, going into the ad, uh, into the cart, but they're not purchasing, it's usually connected to the pricing point. So if you have a lot of people going add to cart, but they are not purchasing it, you probably want to reduce the price and see how the sales are increasing and later on you can put the price up again. Um, but also you want to make sure that you have social proof on your product page. So the people are actually just spending around eight seconds on your page, looking at the picture, scrolling down all the way down to the uh, customer reviews, which is also a big factor. So you want to have amazing customer reviews with picture clear pic, uh, pictures, um, descriptions, and that will gain the trust because the people are actually not familiar with your store. So I'm doing mainly Shopify sh stores, so there are usually no names and um, people need to gain that trust and then they're actually able to buy from your store. Uh, but another thing that a lot of people forget is remarketing because the, uh, the potential customer needs time in order to buy your product. It usually, I mean, it happens that the people are buying on your first contact um, or your uh, yeah, first contact with the ad, but mainly you want to have 10 contact points over the next 30 days in order to make that purchase happen because in real life, nobody has all the day time to purchase a product. They have it in mind, but they are not able to do it. And that's where we online marketers come in and uh, follow the, the lead basically. Wow, I think it's like just now that information was so insightful. So it's actually like structured algorithm, what you need to check in terms of launching your Facebook ad. Um, and um, my next question is actually to Basel. Could you please first introduce yourself, your background, you know, like how you came to, you know, the e commerce? Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, my background comes from marketing. I spent all my career in marketing uh, for hotels. Four years ago, I decided to leave the job and start a business. So, I founded Baby Gulf, which was uh, um, a baby uh, premium consumables uh, direct to consumer brand. So this is the brand that you're distributing, right? It's right. not a, okay. Great. So, so it's a brand that we sell uh, directly to consumers. We sell on different channels as well, uh, in multiple countries, not just the UAE. So UAE, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and just recently we launched Qatar. So yeah, across five countries. Wow, that's great. That's amazing. And um, having that multiple countries, that multiple channels, how you usually check the data on your user acquisition cost and how it different to different regions inside the MENA? Yeah, great question. It, 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 so when you're running campaigns on different social media platforms, it's very difficult to keep track of your numbers, especially that today the results, a lot of them don't happen on the website itself. A lot, of our, a lot of our customers even buy via voice note, you know, they'll be driving the car, oh, I need this and this and this, please ship it to my house tomorrow. So how do you track this? This is a result of a marketing campaign and, and where do you consolidate all, all this data? A lot of it is coming offline and it's a very difficult uh, scenario. And with social media platforms like Meta, for example, there's a lot of discrepancies in your numbers. In your, uh, if, you're, if you're launching a campaign for purchase, you get numbers that are not very accurate. Um, for now, I rely on, on, on Google uh, Analytics mainly as a tool plus the data we collect offline. Altogether, if you combine that, because neglecting what happens offline is a big part of the picture and a lot of people forget about it. So they think that their marketing expense is not bringing in results. It is, but you just don't know where it's coming from. Got it. And like, what in your case, like recent custom acquisition costs, like and how, how you actually decomposite that cost between the like, uh, channels, for example. How do I com combine the cost? You yeah, mean? combine, yeah. Exactly. So, so we look at all the aspects that go into the cost of acquiring a customer. Again, a lot of people get this wrong. They just put the advertising cost and that's it. But a lot of things go into that acquisition. 
you have the time the employees spend, you have the customer acquisition, you have the packing, which is sometimes you know an add-on, sometimes you have even the delivery. So when it comes to our uh, uh, baby diapers, we do offer a sample pack, right? And the customer pays a delivery fee for that sample pack, but I hold the expense of the pack itself. So I have the expense of the pack, uh, plus the marketing, plus the employee. So it comes out a little bit bigger than just the marketing expense itself. So it's so amazing but because you guys have two different business models because um, actually um, Said Musahi has the model of dropshipping. Again, you can elaborate more on that because you don't spend, you, you, basically you have that clear customer acquisition cost because you don't do anything except the marketing for the products. So, and um, Elsa, if you can share like what CPO for the, this region or like you have recently. Okay. Um, I can share with you a recent uh, case study that we did uh, January 2023. So we do classic drop shipping, which means we are sending the products directly from the manufacturing to the customer to Germany, for example. We have warehouses that are already located in Europe, so we can deliver also fast shipping. Uh, but generally speaking, Facebook ads, it's tough nowadays to get a uh, cost per acquisition below 20 euros per sale. Uh, but we managed to do around 10, between 5 and 10 euros per sale uh, on Facebook, um, which is a great uh, example that it really depends on the content and the marketing strategies that you utilize in order to reduce the cost of Facebook, because Facebook wants you to succeed, but you need to show the right thing to the certain audience, because Facebook wants the customer or the potential user on Facebook to have a great experience on Facebook. And that's what you have to keep in mind, and then you can also achieve um, numbers in that range. Oh, that's interesting. And uh, what does the price of the product? So, so yeah. We, bought, we buy this product for 8 to 9 euros, including shipping, and we sell it for 30 euros on the store. Got it. So basically, it's like you have five for, for the CPO, for the marketing, yeah. and your margin is around five. Yeah, so it's a return investment around six, which is already a great deal uh, for dropshipping. Wow, that's, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good product. <laughs> it's, a simple product it's, a, it's a simple product even. I can say it's in a man beauty niche um, and people will be surprised what a kind of boring product it actually is. Um, but yeah, it's, it is definitely possible. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, the next question is uh, to Basil. Um, so then you launch in your campaigns because for you it's like more like brand marketing what usually like how, how you test your creatives like what the lead usually what, what has like the best possible conversion in terms of <laughs> the best possible conversion we did a test recently that was a very interesting experience we we made a video a professional video that we spent uh, a lot of money on. We had the crew, models, baby, everything, and it was really proper. The whole argument came, um, I have a business partner who always disagrees with me that our creatives are too ugly. That's his constant statement. So I said, okay, we'll make a very nice creative, no problem, we'll spend some money. And, and we made a beautiful video, one of the most beautiful videos we've ever made. And against that, we got a micro-influencer, um, a very small page, 10,000 followers, she shot a review with an old phone with text over the screen. It was horrific. And we launched a similar campaign on both. And the results of the simple, you know, influ micro-influencer outpaced the, the, the creative that we m paid a lot of money on. So today people, you know, people trust other people. People want to see the message of other people. I always emphasize on the power of user-generated content the power of that is just enormous. So back to your question, what's the best? My favorite is as simple as possible coming from a genuine user that is very similar to the person that you're targeting in, in how he behaves, how he talks, etc. Oh, 
that's uh, great. And um, yeah, it's, it's actually, you mentioned as well that uh, the, the reviews as power was as a client generation content is very powerful as well. But what else supposed to be on the page except the reviews? What kind of technical, you know, um, requirements your page supposed to, you know, like maintain to get that conversion? very important that you have a fast product page because if you are having a loading uh, time from three seconds you will lose probably 50% of your traffic already so that's the first thing um, you want to have also kind of a um, storytelling in your product page uh, which is um, usually the best thing to do um, in order to pick up your customer to explain the situation to create a scenario in their head and go from there. That's uh, usually the best case. Wow, well, it's uh, actually uh, the same <laughs> for you guys. Um, okay, so if you launch in not a few years ago, four years ago, eight years ago, but just now, what the best advice in terms of launching your campaigns? It's actually a question to both of you. Like you can give yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, the best thing is actually to test different products, different markets um, with a lower budget. So what happens, Facebook actually needs, for example, three days in order to put the settings that you put into the machine, basically in the AI machine. Um, and you can see it also on the CPM trend. So if you check the CPM, you will see over the first three days, it should go down and stay on the specific level. But if you see that your ad campaign and the CPM trend is going up and um, stays high, you want to maybe change uh, some of your ads uh, targeting and also your creative because Facebook is basically giving you a bad ranking and you're paying extra for that spot on Facebook. Um, you should try to, to aim a, a lower CPM. Um, but yeah, it's basically the combination of uh, testing different products um, with a low budget. And as I explained in the beginning, um, a combination of niche targeting and broad targeting um, is doing pretty well nowadays. Wow. Well. <laughs> The best advice would be that you, you need to focus on not opinions but numbers. You know, a lot of people focus on my opinion, his opinion, and whenever I have this struggle with, with anybody, numbers speak for themselves. And today we can test anything. Uh, I just met a, a friend that I haven't seen in a long time. He was considering launching a new business uh, and he was telling me all about it. I said, Yeah, okay, well, what's, what's the risk? He's going to invest hundred thousand dollars to get the inventory so why not test it test it now today it doesn't cost a thing it costs your time a couple of hundred dollars so yeah test the idea that you have in your mind and, and most importantly rely on the numbers the numbers speak louder than any other opinion well i guess it's great advice especially for the conference which uh, topic is analytics <laughs> and um data um so it's actually i think it was very short discussion but it's like right on the point i guess you've got like the the the, the structured response how to launch your facebook ad and what to focus on